The name Onawa, or Onawe, is an algic word of the Wabanaki that means awake or awaken. And the name Wabanaki itself means people of the Dawnland. If you've watched my Borstone or my Baron videos, you've probably heard me mention it uh, more than once. Um, in fact, behind me, see, you can get a shot of Borstone in the background. And then uh, we turn around uh, over here. You can see Baron, and if we, uh, it's on the other side of Bodfish Valley. And if we work our way this way, you can start to see some of the Fourth Mountain and some of the some of the Chairbacks uh, beyond. That's where the AT runs, uh, not down here, but. Anyway, so this is the first time that I've had opportunity to be on Onawa, so this is pretty cool. There seems to be quite a few people out on the lake today, which is not surprising. Yeah, it's a good, uh, good place to be on a day like today. And I don't know if you can hear the uh, sound of the outboards uh, off to my right. Starting out paddling, I was a little disoriented from where the islands are. Um, probably one of the uh, consequences of having only ever seen this pond from, or lake, from either the boat landing or Borstone or Barren, or I guess technically the trestle. Um, and I do plan to uh, take us over by the trestle tomorrow morning. Um, just to get a look up at that. That should be interesting. A lot of history behind that trestle. Uh, I'll go into that more tomorrow as well. Uh, so, till then, I'm just gonna keep paddling. I'm just gonna keep paddling. We are headed for, I don't know if it's showing up on screen or not, but there is a small island just off to my right, straight ahead from the camera's view. And that's where we're headed, and see what the uh, see what the ground looks like over there. I do have a hammock set up tonight, so as long as I can find two trees, I should be in good shape. But uh, we will see. One of the downsides to this smaller kayak is it feels fairly maneuverable, but man, its tracking is well, it's not good. Now that being said, it could also be that it's been a long time since I've paddled in a kayak. And it could be that my skills are just lackluster. I mean, I suppose it could be a mix, but it's probably also that my skills aren't up to par. Anyway, it's still, this is still a great way to spend an afternoon. All right, well, it took me a little bit of time to find a suitable spot to pull in, uh, get out of the kayak without rolling over, dumping all my gear in the lake. Um, <laughs> so after a couple of laps around the island, which is not, not big at all, found a place that's not ideal, but obviously it works because we're here. Doesn't look like there has been a lot of human activity on this island. Um, I'm sure somebody's been here before. Uh, but there's a spot that where I'm standing would have been an ideal place for a hammock, but I don't trust that tree. And there isn't a large enough tree for the other end from where I'm standing. So I'm going to, there's an alternate spot that I think will work fine. It'll just be a little bit uh, more exposed than I would have liked, but it's okay. It's not supposed to rain and the temperature is supposed to be just about perfect. So everything should work out fine. Anyway, I am gonna go ahead, get my hammock set up, uh, and uh, probably just take it easy for a little bit after that. It's a very small footprint, not a lot of room to do much of anything, uh, not a lot to explore, but still. So let me go ahead and do that. It 
has been a long while since I've set up this hammock. I mean, it's a good thing I got here when I did. Apparently it's gonna take me all, after, all evening to tie an adjustable grip hitch. Got the hammock set up, sorta. So here's a quick aerial view of our island where we'll be spending the night. Uh, hopefully this gives you an idea of just how not large this space is. Uh, should be an interesting evening. Looking forward to it. Lake Anawa is a deep cold water lake. Its maximum depth is around 84, 85 feet. Its mean depth is more around 19 to 20 feet. Um, and it's got uh, just over 15 miles of shoreline. Uh, now there's no trail uh, around the lake itself, so you'll either have to paddle or swim if you want to explore all 15 miles, 15 plus miles. Um, I'm not sure what its acreage is, um, but uh, hopefully as you can see throughout this video, it's in an extremely scenic area. Um, you know, it's relatively isolated and surrounded by mountains. It's just a just a really peaceful, beautiful place. All right, since it worked oh so well on that uh, grandfather mountain trip that we took recently, me and some friends, uh, brought hot dogs yet again. So let's see what kind of results we can get with that. All right, well, aside from the dripping into the flame, that actually seems to have worked pretty well. I mean, assuming you're okay with hot dogs. It actually smells like a hot dog. So anyway, I think we're gonna eat a couple of hot dogs and just enjoy the evening. I think it's a little after six. Maybe it's, why don't we check? Oh, it's 20 till seven. <laughs> I really doubt that the mic picked that up, but earlier I heard a loon call and I wasn't expecting it. If you haven't heard them before, they have a weird quality to them. They're, they're, they can be a little spooky. I haven't seen them. I mean, it sounds like it's coming from the other side of the lake, closer into the shore of the actual lake, not this island. Uh, so I probably won't see them, but they're a, they're a unique bird. Um, my grandmother used to love just sitting down by the water uh, at her camp on Sebec and just listening to the loons. That being said, uh, on an island that's maybe 80 feet by 80 feet, so what's that, 640 square feet, or 6,400, I'm very bad at math. Um, anyway, it's not very big. <laughs> so there's not a lot to explore, or maybe I will just sit up and listen and see if I can, see if I can spot any loons somewhere in between here and the shore. Either way, I will most likely see y'all in the morning. Hey guys, so it's a little after 8.30, quarter to nine, something like that. Sun is set. I hope it comes back, or the sounds come back, but uh, not too long ago, loons, frogs, all kinds of just amazing sounds that you typically don't hear. Well, I typically don't hear because I don't uh, typically spend a lot of time at these lakes in uh, northern Maine. So I'm going to let the camera run for a little bit and hope that the loons act up again and that uh, that the uh, microphone that I'm wearing is able to pick up their their song it seems like they might have quieted down for the evening though unfortunately that's uh, just such a cool such a cool sound. Oh, mosquito trying to... Anyway, uh, that's not a cool sound. That whine, buzz. Anyway. Um, so, I'll just wait a bit. 
see if we hear anything. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, not a bad night's sleep. It did get a little cold. I did end up breaking out the sleeping bag. Looks like it's going to be another beautiful day today. Hardly any clouds in the sky. Just a moment ago, I heard a train whistle. And the Onawa trestle may be difficult to see. Maybe right about in the middle third here, top of the middle third. Um, it is still an active train line. A Canadian railroad maintains it now. Oh, oh, okay, hold on, I gotta set this down and see if I can take a picture of some of these loons. So I'm sure it's probably imperceptible from here, but there is a train actively moving across the trestle right now. And for most people, that's probably, it's a train, so what? Uh, <laughs> having lived in this area, uh, growing up around it, and always wanting to see a train move across that trestle. This is probably more exciting than it should be, but uh, this is cool to see. Uh, they don't publish those schedules, so it's not like you can uh, plan to be in the area when a train is expected to come through. Anyway, this is, yeah, this is, this is, this is neat. This is a good day uh, for me to be out here. All right, well, with all that said, let's go ahead and get some breakfast, uh, pack up, finish packing up and uh, get back in the kayak and oh i still have a headlight on don't i interesting um because it's you know bright out all right so that water's been boiling pretty good pretty well let's see if i can not burn myself ow okay almost we are back in the kayak after only one minor uh surprise swim it wasn't much of a swim really it was just what I thought was a rock. It was just a shiny spot on the water. Man, there have been some boats, or a boat, out this morning, in addition to those loons, but the water right now is just amazing. So we're gonna paddle over to the trestle, to the mouth of Ship Pond Stream. And back in the day, I believe Onawa or Lake Onawa was called Ship Pond from what I've heard because uh, the trees that grew nearby were tall and straight and just about ideal for cutting uh, masts for ships from. So, hence the name. Directly in front of us, Center third, you can see the Onawa trestle. We'll get a better view of it in, in just a bit here. I don't know if the audio is picking it up, but there is the sound of water falling, or at least moving extremely quickly. So I'm not going to go any farther than I am right now, uh, but there is access to the trestle from a road that uh, leads to a trail that leads to the tracks. We'll see if we can find that. Well, I know where it is. We'll just see if we can get back to that in a timely fashion. Yeah, like I've mentioned before, I think, I've never seen uh, the trestle from this perspective. All right, well, okay. So there's apparently a trail here it uh, seems to be intended for snowmobiles but there is no snow so i think it'll be all right to take it by foot so let's try that let's see if we can work our way up to the trestle and get some views looking down onto onawa and beyond so we're beached and we're gonna see where this trail leads and should be able to get up to the trestle from here be maybe a bit of a hike but we'll Let's see. I don't know if you can see behind me here, but we've got this. Well, if I can find some footing. It says uh, historic 
on a dam foot traffic only. So this is what I uh, heard from the kayak and did not want to go down with that kayak. So you can see some of the, the drop there and rocks in the way. All right, straight ahead of me, you can see one of the piers supporting the trestle. It's uh, obviously been decorated. Here we are under it. There's a bit of a ramp toward the tracks themselves, so let's take that. All right, so we're up here on the trestle. You can see, well, actually, I guess we're just on the, uh, at the base of it. We do need to walk out a bit to get over the, over the stream to get a view of the lake, so we'll go ahead and do that. couple of little uh, balconies, I guess, uh, along the portion of this uh, trestle that does uh, include a place to walk so that you're not getting smacked by a train. Although, I suppose if you were out here and a train went by, about center third now you can see Borstone. And uh, middle right third, Onawa, where we just paddled from. And now that I'm up here, Looking at the uh, the dam where the where the water leaves Onawa and enters Ship Pond Stream, that uh, I should have remembered that. The Onawa Trestle, also known as the Ship Pond Viaduct, is the longest and tallest railroad trestle in Maine and possibly all of New England. It is 1,230 feet long, and the pillars on which it rests are about 130 feet tall. It was originally built as a wooden structure in 1889, but just a few years later in 1896, it was replaced with a steel structure. Now, even despite its remoteness, uh, this railway is still in use today. Uh, the Central Maine and Quebec Railway uses it as a shortcut between New Brunswick and Quebec. In the winter of 1919, just after 7 a.m. on the morning of December 20th, two trains collided just west of the trestle. One was westbound train 39 carrying uh, some soldiers and mostly passengers from an ocean liner named Empress of France. The other was freight train 78 out of Megantic uh, in Quebec. Train 78 had stopped at Moosehead Station in Greenville. Now the signalmen, they were 13 hours into a 16 hour shift, so probably feeling pretty sleep deprived. And they misunderstood the latest report they thought train 39 was eight hours behind schedule, so they sent train 78 down the track. Unfortunately, train 39 was only five hours behind, so the two collided at Onawa Station, just a couple of miles west of here. 17 people died instantly, six more in the following days, and another 50 injured were treated at area hospitals. During World War II, the U.S. Army stationed the 366th Infantry the Black Guards, a segregated unit, to guard the trestle to protect supply lines from fears of terrorism. These 16 soldiers largely remained at the trestle instead of lodging in nearby towns, effectively living out of boxcars because of prejudices, including those of their own superior. Now, living out of a boxcar in the middle of a Maine winter must have been brutal. Now, not everyone in the towns had issues with skin color, of course, but enough to make the soldiers uncomfortable. And they did find dynamite under the trestle, but no one knows how it got there. It was probably just left there by some loggers who forgot about it. Uh, unfortunately, one soldier did die on the tracks when he didn't hear an oncoming train. Work my way back to the kayak, then paddle over to the boat landing so if I can get a hold of my ride. Uh, I do appreciate you 
tagging along. Hope you enjoyed the, the views. And uh, I look forward to seeing you the next time out. So until then, take care. Mm -hmm.